Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well and you're taking care of yourselves. So I'm coming to you today with a message from your person. I have three cards here. I've channeled some short messages that I've written down in each of them. Um, and we're just going to be looking into basically what your person of interest would like to say to you, how they're feeling, what they want you to know, uh, you know, whatever comes up. Um, so we have three cards, one, two, and three. The timestamps for each of them will be in the comment section as usual. While you guys are making your choices, I just want to take a moment to mention um, how much I appreciate you all, um, all of you who take the time to watch my videos and, you know, leave me a like and subscribe and comment. I can't tell you how much it all means to me because this channel has really changed my life in a lot of ways in the year and a half that I've been doing this. So um, I just wanted to say thank you. And I hope you all are holding up and doing okay. This year has been a roller coaster ride to say the least. So, you know, make sure you're taking care of yourselves. It's been a rough one and we're only halfway through. Um, <clears throat> anyway, all of my links will be in the description box below if you're interested in checking those out. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Serpentine Daughter. Um, also, if you're interested in getting a private reading from me, I do offer those. You can order through my website or my Etsy store, and uh, the links will be below. All the information that you need for ordering them will be in those individual listings. So, um, with that said, I think we're just going to jump right into this with group number one. So, group one, I think I'm going to use the Kawaii Tarot for you guys today. And I just want to start by reading your channeled message. So, don't mind my handwriting, it looks like ass. <laughs> your message says, I have loved you for a thousand lifetimes. You are the beat of my heart, the light of my soul. I love you and I always will. I carry you with me always. So, group number one, we're getting off to a pretty positive start. Um, let's see what cards want to come out for you guys. Okay, right away we have the Empress. We have the Five of Swords. Ace of Pentacles, mm, that's a few too many cards, <clears throat> Eight of Wands, I'm getting a lot of love here, <laughs> group one. This person, whoever it is that you're thinking about, whoever it is that's coming through here, this person thinks the world of you. Seven of Swords. Let me get a couple more. Six of Swords. And the Lovers. Okay. So, on the bottom of the deck, group one, is the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is a very, very positive card to me. Um, I relate this to, you know, wish fulfillment, abundance, prosperity. I associate this card with, you know, a happy home life. Um, just contentment, satisfaction, loving relationships in general. And um, this, is, this is kind of illustrating, like, the overall theme, the overall vibe that I get with this spread. Um, group one, like I mentioned already, there's a lot of love coming through in these cards. I mean, the Empress was the first to come out. This card does have an association with, you know, unconditional love. The Empress is a maternal figure. Um, the Empress is, the Empress is love in a lot of ways. 
she is nurturing, she is kind, compassionate, empathetic. Um, we also have the Six of Cups here, which is somewhat similar to me. The Six of Cups is considered to be one of the soulmate cards. This is associated with memories, nostalgia, the past. Um, it can indicate something returning to you from the past or, you know, going back to something from your past. And, um, I also associate this card with like innocence, childhood, youth, you know, um, and the lover's card. This is union, partnerships, again, a very loving, unconditionally loving energy. Um, the person that we are talking about here, this person feels as if you complete them, okay? This person feels as if you complete them. The Five of Swords suggests to me that they have not had the easiest life, okay? The Five of Swords, this is conflict, defeat, disappointment. Um, this card can also represent, like, having to um, go about things in kind of a underhanded or sneaky or just not good way. Um... I feel like this person has been dealt some bad hands in their life and particularly in relationships, I feel like they've been burned a lot. And I kind of get the impression that they had begun to think that they were just going to be alone forever or that they just weren't capable of, of like truly loving somebody because it seems like it, it feels okay. They're, they're saying I, I'm, I've never felt this way about anyone before. I've never loved somebody as much as I love you. And that is, it sounds kind of dramatic, <laughs> but that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting here. It's like your connection, like meeting you, opened brand new doors for this person and changed their life, like literally. It changed how they view the world, how they think about themselves. And um, Like I mentioned already, they've been burned a lot in the past, they've been hurt a lot in the past, and I feel like they had just been kind of storing all of that stuff up inside of them, like kind of just bottling it up, but since they met you, since you, you know, have had a relationship with each other, I feel like your connection has kind of put them onto the path of healing and, and moving forward. Um, and, and just becoming a better version of themselves. And I get that with that Six of Swords here, the Seven of Swords and the Six of Swords um, together. The Six of Swords in particular is about like conflict resolution, moving forward into calmer waters. Um, I Yeah, I feel like this connection has kind of put them onto the path of becoming a better version of who they are, like, like becoming the best version of themselves that they can be. And it's like your connection makes them want to do that too. And I'm not saying that you are like fixing them because I don't really feel like you are actively like trying to fix this person. And you, you shouldn't have to actively try to fix this person um, because those, uh, that kind of thing hardly ever works out. It, it, this feels more like this person is doing this on their own and it just so happens, or maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that, but your connection was just the thing that kind of prompted this growth, this evolution that they're undergoing. Does that make sense? Um, I'm going to pull a couple of Oracle cards here and see if there's anything that they would like to add. This person just really, really wants you to know that they love you a lot and they're extremely grateful for you, your your presence in their life, um, the things that you've done for them. I feel like you don't even know <laughs> like how much you've done for them. They're saying, 
just, you know, just existing, just you existing and us having a relationship with each other. Like I've learned a lot from you and I am still learning a lot as a result of our relationship. Um, and you just, you're, you're never going to, to know completely how much, like, like what a difference you've made in my life. We have, um, passion, allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. You make this person extremely happy. I shouldn't have to, um, elaborate on that too much. The flirt card is kind of similar. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. Um, these two cards are implying to me, first of all, they're saying, um, you're, you're extremely attractive to them. You probably know this already, but I feel like this person, um, how do I want to say this? This person wants to like make babies and all of that. <laughs> there, th this person feels very passionate about you, you know, in, in, in the physical sense, like sexually, but I'm also just getting like a real strong desire to like build a life with you. It's like this person wants to, um, start a family or be a family with you. You know, family doesn't necessarily have to involve children if that's not, you know, something that you're interested in. There's no wrong way to make a family, right? Um, I just get a lot of familial vibes with this Queen of Pentacles here and this Ten of Pentacles showing up again. Um, it's like this person wants to have it all. They want the house. They want the pets. They want the you know, having dinner together and snuggling on the couch. And this tower card is really emphasizing, again, you turn this person's life upside down, but in a good way. Um, the tower is not always, you know, a totally negative energy. The tower can be any kind of life-changing event. Anything that tears down your expectations, that, you know, turns your expectations and, and your beliefs upside down, right? And that's really what your connection did. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, this person f kind of had this feeling like maybe I'm just not meant to be in love. Maybe I'm just not meant to be, you know, somebody's partner in life. Maybe I just don't have an, an, another half out there. But you've made them realize that's stupid. Everybody has somebody including them. And that's what this true love card is talking about. This is the romance of a lifetime. This to me, I, I consider this to be one of the life partner cards. So um, it's, it's coming through very clearly that this person is really strongly desiring a life with you. I feel like some of you may actually already be in a relationship with this person. Like some of you may actually already be kind of on the path to building a life together, creating a life together. And if that's the case, they are incredibly happy. <laughs> they are incredibly happy. Um, I'm getting a couple uh, clarifiers here for this codependency card. I really feel like it's just kind of, um, hang on, hang on. I really feel like it's just kind of emphasizing um, the point that, that we've already made about, what is this? Okay, yeah. Um, this person, there are some aspects of their past that they are not super proud of. For some of you, you know, this person has struggled with addiction, mental health issues, just, you know, bad, bad life choices in general. Um, but I feel like they've come a long way. They've made a lot of big changes. 
and your connection, you specifically, you helped them to do that because you gave them motivation to do that. Like you gave them the motivation to be better. You gave them the motivation to keep fighting, to actually fight, to be better. And it's been a, a long road for a lot of them. Uh, it's been a long, kind of arduous journey. But they've made a lot of progress. And, you know, there's still progress to be made. But they've come a long way. And they are just... They never thought that they would be where they are now. They never thought they could be this happy. They never thought... They never thought that they could have a connection like this. They never thought that they could connect with another person the way that they have connected with you. And, you know, regardless of whether this person, you know, whether you currently have a relationship with this person or not, I feel like this is still applicable because I'm getting that for some of you, you may actually be in separation from this individual, but I feel like, you know, the message still applies because I get the sense that regardless, you know, no matter what is happening between the two of you or what isn't happening, um, whatever the case may be, I feel like this connection has still made those changes for them. Like it's still opened their eyes to these things, that they're better than what they were, that they deserve better, um, that, you know, they are capable of giving and receiving love, like pure, genuine love. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> <laughs> my voice is getting like real scratchy all of a sudden and I'm not sure what that's all about because it's I it's been fine like all day um I feel like for a lot of you this person maybe has a little bit of a blockage going on in the throat chakra area um or you know they they just it seems like they just haven't really um, communicated a lot of this stuff to you, okay? Um, and I guess that's why it's showing up here, you know, this, these are things that they feel at the soul level. These are things that they think, you know, deep down, but they, um, they maybe are too afraid to say it out loud or they just, or uh, for a lot of you, I feel like your person just doesn't really know how to express this stuff to you. Um, they may not be the best at talking about, you know, their feelings and all of that. And I feel like for, for a lot of you guys, that is the result of basically their past, their history. I feel like they've spent a lot of their lives having to repress a lot of their emotions. You know, pretend to feel one way. Or, or pretend to not be bothered or unaffected by things. Um, for some of you, your person, ha this this stuff stems from like their childhood. Like, like this person was punished for expressing, you know, inconvenient emotions. Like, you know, crying or becoming angry. Like... It, because, you know, their parents or the people around them, whatever, saw it as inconvenient, uncomfortable to deal with, you know, whatever. Um, and, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting, uh, kind of getting away from the point here, but I just, I just really feel, oh, I just really feel so... Gosh, I don't even... Okay, hang on. I'm 
We have the friendship card popping out here. Let me grab one more. I feel like I want one more. Okay, and we have, oh, we have the soulmate card. And I, okay, that one just fell out too. So, um, friendship, nurture the bones of friendship within your relationship and your love life will dramatically improve. This person is saying you are not only someone that they love, but for a lot of you, you are their best friend. Okay. They've never experienced a connection like this on any level of any kind. They've never had like a friendship this meaningful. They've never had any kind of relationship this meaningful. So it's, it's like, you know, <laughs> this is really emphasizing the fact that, you know, this is more than just a romantic thing. This is more than just a sexual thing, although the passion card is kind of touching back on that. Um, it's, it's like all of these different aspects of this relationship are, are popping out here because all of it is equally important to them. The friendship element of your relationship, the physical, you know, more intimate aspects of your relationship. You, you don't necessarily have to have a physical connection with this person at this point in time, but I, I'm, I'm this. This is really just talking to me about like attraction, and I mean, for some of you, you you have had a physical relationship with this person. Um, but in in general, this is just talking about like the that that attraction, that that feeling of like magnetism that they experience with you, and the soulmate card. Your soulmate is already with you. Believe this, and they will manifest physically. I think this person can believes that you are their soulmate. Or they might be suspecting that you are their soulmate. For a lot of you, your person is kind of skeptical about the idea of soulmates. And so, to some extent, they feel kind of silly thinking that way. But <laughs> I feel like there's also this, you know, thought process that, like, you know, maybe the idea of soulmates is kind of silly. But that's the only explanation that I can think of, you know, for... That, that's the only way that this relationship would make sense, that this connection would make sense. <clears throat> that we have known each other before, that we are two parts of the same thing, the same entity. It's the only explanation for, for a connection this intense, this deep. That's what they're thinking. Okay, um, <laughs> I was getting ready to wrap it up there and leave it at that for you guys, but I actually feel like I might, I feel like I need to pull a few more cards. I feel like there's still more that wants to be said. We have the Three of Wands. This is all about future potential, potential for action, the Emperor card and the four of wands okay this person is really optimistic about the future of this connection i feel like they are looking forward into the future with hope and enthusiasm and they are <laughs> i'm i'm getting that <clears throat> For some of you, this person started making plans almost as soon as you met. Like, as soon as, almost as soon as you started talking, this person started making plans. Like, you know, I'm going to marry this person someday. We're going to live wherever. You know, we're going to have this many children, whatever. Um, I, I feel like they're, they're saying, you know, I... I knew. I knew almost as soon as we met that you were my person. 
And so, yeah, I started kind of getting caught up in, you know, the what ifs in the future where, you know, what might happen. And I feel like we're on that path to those what ifs that I thought about. The emperor is considered to be like a husband or father figure. Um, I feel for a lot of you, you're dealing with a uh, more masculine counterpart. Um, masculine energy doesn't necessarily mean that this is a man. So like, don't get caught up on the gender. But the emperor card relates to like the divine masculine energies so um yeah I, I i do feel like the majority of you are probably dealing with a, a more masculine aligned individual but um regardless of whether you are or aren't um the point still stands it's like this person wants to have the stability this person wants to have the security um you, your, your relationship has been so healing for them in a lot of ways, and they want to be able to give back to you what you have given to them. Um, the Four of Wands, this is about union, partnerships. This card can represent weddings, marriage. Um, this is also considered to be one of the soulmate cards. We have a few that came out here. I mean, we have this card. We've got the Four of Wands. We have the Lovers. We have the Six of Cups. We also have the Emperor and the Empress. This is this is a mess here. Um, but anyway, we also have the Emperor and the Empress. These two cards are counterparts. And counterparts a lot of times represent, you know, two people who are in alignment with each other, a couple or, or two people who are going to become a couple in the future. Um, and I consider the presence of counterparts to be an indicator of, like, soul connections. So I, I kind of feel like this person may actually be your soulmate. Or, or you do have some kind of soul, soulmate relationship with this person. Um, so they, um, I, I feel like they're kind of on the right track with, with that idea that, you know, maybe maybe we are soulmates like maybe soulmates are real um for some of you guys your person is kind of questioning that but you know as far as this relationship is concerned it you know the idea of soulmates doesn't seem that far-fetched to them under other circumstances if it was any other connection they might laugh but in this case they're saying, I feel like there is something to this. So, um, group one, I am going to leave it there for you guys today. I hope that this reading resonated with you. I hope it was interesting. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, all of my links are in the description below. So if you're interested in checking those out, feel free. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Serpentine Daughter. And also, if you're interested in booking a private reading with me, all of that info will be down there as well. So, thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope I see you next time. Bye! Hello, Group 2. We're here to get a message for you from your person of interest. So I have here the Tarot of Vampires that I'm going to be using for you guys today. And I also have here your little channeled message, which we're going to start off with that. Don't mind my handwriting. It is not good. <laughs> um, okay. Group two, your channeled message says, I'm sorry that I have not been the person you hoped I would be. I feel like I've disappointed you and the guilt eats me up. It wasn't supposed to be like this, but I messed everything up. Group two, some issues, some conflict with your person, eh? Um, 
this right away definitely feels like a separation situation, no contact situation um, for, for the vast majority of you group two. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. Okay. We have the Ace of Wands. <clears throat> Ten of Swords, Four of Wands, Five of Pentacles. This is upside down. Turn that up right. <clears throat> The devil, okay. Pre the the priestess and the chariot, and let me grab one more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Well, we have two more that are coming out here: the chariot, the four of cups, and judgment. Okay, so um, first thing that I want to talk about here is the fact that this person, whoever it is you're thinking of, whoever this message is coming from, this person seems to be dealing with a lot of, um, how do I want to say this? Negative uh, thoughts, beliefs about themselves. This person seems to really be kind of beating themselves up about what has happened between the two of you. <clears throat> we have the devil card showing up right in the center of this spread. And the devil is about codependency. It's about toxic relationships, toxic situations. Um, it can represent addiction, mental health issues, uh, possessiveness, obsession. You know, it can indicate someone being very controlling. In general, this card just tends to represent any kind of situation where a person may be feeling trapped or stuck. And you know, we also have the Ten of Swords here. This is grief, heartache, loss. This is a painful or difficult ending. We have the Five of Pentacles here. This card is, this is loss as well. This is grief. This is loneliness, abandonment, um, instability. Also, the Four of Cups. This card I relate to, you know, indecision, uncertainty. Um, also, this card gives me a very listless um, kind of energy, like the energy of someone who just isn't doing anything, like someone who is 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 miserable, but they're not taking any, they're they're not making any effort to like do anything about it. I I kind of see the Four of Cups as like a pity party going on. Um, let me move this curtain a little bit because it's gotten very dark in here. Okay. Yeah, I, I, your person, whoever it is you're thinking about, this person's dealing with a lot of like remorse, regret, guilt surrounding your connection and, and things that have gone on between you. I feel like this person has wronged you um, kind of extensively. And they know this, like they, they recognize this. Um, this person seems to be aware that, that they've caused you a lot of grief and a lot of heartache and a lot of uncertainty. And they feel really bad about that. But it's like they're, they're just kind of, it's like they're just kind of wallowing in those feelings of guilt and remorse and etc. Um, I feel 
if you are in separation from this person or if you have very little contact with this person or if you know contact is just kind of um surface level your person has a, a real fear of like being judged harshly by you your person is honestly it, it feels like they're a little bit afraid of you okay they're afraid of you judging them you're they're afraid of you rejecting them in some way um to some extent, they're kind of afraid of being treated by you the way that you treated them. Or the way that they treated you. Yes, that's that's what I meant. They're, they're kind of afraid that you will treat them the way they treated you. And so I kind of get the impression that this person has just sort of run away from the situation the chariot card being here um <clears throat> they it's like they don't have the courage or the ability I, I feel like this person might not even be capable of like communicating their feelings to you adequately I, I, I get the sense that they may be a little bit, like, I want to say emotionally stunted. Like, they just don't have the level of, like, emotional intelligence to really convey to you, like, why they've done the things that they've done. And, and they don't even really have enough of that emotional intelligence to understand for themselves why they have behaved the way that they have, which is interesting. Um, it, it's, it's like your, your person feels that they have just, you know, ruined this connection in a lot of ways. And I feel most of them are kind of correct in, in that belief but they don't they don't fully understand like why they've done the things that they've done this person has a lot of deep like emotional wounds core wounds and shortcomings that they you know that that they've never tried to improve on you know and and things that they've never really even tried to heal and so all of those things, they're, they're making them kind of, well, okay, how do I want to say this? I feel like this connection was a bit too much for this person. It was, it was quite intense for them. It was something unlike anything else they'd ever experienced. We do have the Four of Wands here, which is considered to be one of the soulmate cards. I think it's possible that you and this person are soulmates, that you, you this, this might even be like a twin flame kind of thing. But, um, yeah, this, it seems like this was very intense for them. It was something unlike anything else they've ever experienced, and it scared them. And so it caused them to, like, act out in really, uh, I was going to say stupid ways. <laughs> um, it, it just caused them to act out, and it, it caused them to, you know, push you away. And they themselves are not fully conscious of why they did that. Like, why did this connection make them feel so afraid? Why did this connection make them feel so, you know, feel such a need to be in control of the situation? They don't really know. They don't really understand. They don't have an understanding of what this connection actually is. Um, because I do feel... Actually, I feel for a lot of you, this could very well be um, like a twin flame kind of thing. Or I, I just, I feel like there's there's a lot of um, like karma that exists between the two of you. And this connection is meant to be transformative for you both. This connection is meant to put you both on the path towards, you know, illumination, a higher level of understanding. Um growth, right? I get that from the priestess card here. <clears throat> mm. 
And I feel many of you who chose this group are still in the early stages of this journey with this particular person. Um, I feel that a lot of you are kind of hurting right now. And I'm also just noticing, just realizing that a lot of this hasn't necessarily been like what your person would say to you or what they want you to know or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I think that's because they're afraid to express themselves to you. Like they're afraid to come towards you right now. So it's, it's almost like they don't have a lot to say aside from, I screwed everything up. Sorry. You know, I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm just the worst. It's, it's like, that's, that's the kind of mentality that this person seems to have. You know, I'm just the worst and I ruin everything. They're in a very ego, they're, they're really in their ego right now. Um, it's like, it's like they they can't even think about how you really have been affected. They're so fixated on how bad they feel and, you know, how they've messed everything up and blah, blah, blah. It's, I'm going to be honest and say that this person's energy is kind of draining. Like I'm getting weary just doing this reading. Um, and I feel like a lot of you who chose this pile probably know exactly what I'm talking about because it's probably very draining and tiresome for you as well. And I think many of you are aware that this person is very much in their ego and that they may have a tendency to be very like self-centered, self-focused. Um, and so this may not really surprise you that they don't really have a lot that they would actually say to you right now. Um, let me grab a few oracle cards, see if there's anything uh, meaningful that they would like to add. Because I, I just feel... I, I'm, I'm determined to get something else out of your person besides just that. Okay. We have love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. And we have you deserve love. You are lovable. So these two cards are kind of similar to me in the sense that they both relate to like self-empowerment, I feel. Um, they're both about, you know, giving yourself what you deserve. Um, all right, let me grab a couple more. Okay. For yourself, it's time to take back control of your life. All right. Playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit to shine. Hmm. Okay. So, um, the big thing that's coming through with these cards is your person is saying you deserve better than me, basically. Um, I've treated you badly and I feel bad about that, but I don't really know what to do about it because I'm too focused on feeling bad for myself. Um, because I sabotage everything that I touch. Um, that's kind of their thought process right now. Um... But yeah, they're they're saying they're they're saying that you should let go and and move on. They're saying, you know, I I really don't deserve another chance and I don't expect you to give me another chance like ever. Um okay. This person's energy is just so defeated. <sighs> We have the Queen of Swords and the Two of Wands showing up here. Okay. 
Okay, and Page of Pentacles. Okay. Strength. Give me a second here. I don't have the strength right now to admit my failings and my shortcomings as a person. I haven't really identified those parts of myself yet. I have never really dug deep into myself, into who I am. And I know I need to do that. And I know that this connection is supposed to help me do that. It's it's supposed to force me to do that. But I'm kind of resisting it right now because just the thought of doing that is kind of scary. So right now I'm just digging my heels in. I'm just refusing to move. I'm just going to stick, stay, stay right where I am as long as I can and resist as long as I can because all the work that I'm being asked to do, it just seems like too much. I don't know if I'm capable of doing it. Okay. Um, let me grab one of these, see if there's anything else here. Okay, we have the healing card and we have embrace. Healing, imagine yourself and your beloved surrounded by light. Feel your relationship being healed this very moment and the embrace card. Through each other, you find the missing pieces. Okay, this person... Um, your, your connection to this person, I mentioned already, it seems like there is something that is supposed to be transformative about this. This is something that's supposed to set both of you, you know, further along the path to self-actualization, you know, all of that healing and... They're okay. This is their higher self. Their their higher self is saying, you do what you need to do, and I'll do what I need to do. And I'm probably gonna move along much slower than you are. But eventually, you know, maybe someday we'll be on on the same path again. Maybe someday we'll, our stars will align and we'll be able to come back together. But right now, I don't know. Right now, I just need time to myself to think and reflect and try to change, try to be better. Hmm. Okay, so um, group two, I think I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this resonated with you. I hope it made sense. I'm sorry if it, I feel like it was maybe a little bit all over the place, and I'm sorry if it came across that way. Um, I just, you know, like I mentioned already, your person is just really in their ego, and they're really focused on themselves right now like their reactions to everything that has happened between the two of you and how they feel about it and you know etc so um i'm sorry if maybe this wasn't quite what you were hoping or expecting to hear um but i hope maybe it was still helpful or interesting to you and uh you know keep in mind that this is just a general reading so take what applies take what fits and leave the rest behind if something doesn't fit don't try to make it fit um if you would like a personal reading you can go to the links in the description box you can order through my website or my etsy store and um 
yeah, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it, guys. I hope I see you next time. Bye. Okay, group three. I have the Beautiful Creatures Tarot that I'm going to be using for you today. Let's find out what your person would like to say to you, what they want you to know, how they're feeling. Your channeled message. Don't mind my handwriting. It is bad. Um, your channeled message says, nothing compares to how I feel when I'm with you. You are too good to be true and I don't feel like I deserve it. I feel like you're better off without me, but I so wish I could be who you need me to be. So, group three, starting off with a little bit of a sad, I want to say yearning kind of feeling, just, just right off the bat. Let's see what cards want to come out for you guys. I so wish I could be the person you need me to be. Hmm. Okay, we have the Two of Pentacles. All right, all right, this is taking a minute. Can I get some more cards, please? Okay. Two of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. Something about you makes this person feel very grounded and secure, um, which is kind of interesting. Queen of Swords. Okay. Six of Pentacles, the Magician, and the Paranormal Curiosity. So um, this card is like a special card in this deck. This is not a traditional tarot card. It's not based on any of the uh, standard cards. Um, but, you know, it, it relates to curiosity, intrigue. Um, the Unknown is in association with this card. The unknown, an ele uh, element of, like, otherness, I'm feeling. This is really interesting stuff, group three. Um, let's get a few more cards. We have the habit. This is uh, the devil. Ten of cups. And let's grab one more for right now. Can I get one more card, please? Please, please, please. Whoa. That's too many. Sorry, this is taking so long, group three. Okay. We have Temperance and the Seven of Wands. You know what? It's fine. So we'll take both of them. Okay. The card on the bottom of the deck for you guys is the Sun. So the Sun is about illumination, enlightenment, um, contentment, like wish fulfillment. The Sun is really pretty much the best card in the deck, one of the most positive cards in the deck. Um, okay, this person definitely has a lot of positive, loving feelings towards you with that sun card there, also the ten of cups. This speaks to me of like unconditional love, uh, emotional fulfillment, satisfaction, wish fulfillment as well. Um, I feel like this person sees you as 
basically everything that they want, everything that they look for in a, in a person. Um, okay. And, and like I mentioned at the start, when I was, when I was pulling these cards, something about you makes them feel grounded and kind of safe. Like I get the sense that this person, it's almost like they, they see you or they feel like you are a refuge. Um, I get the sense just based on how this energy feels that you and this person are probably in separation right now, or you have little contact. Um, I get that with this Queen of Swords card here, and I feel like that's because, I, I feel like you're in separation, or you have very little contact, because even though this person has a lot of positive feelings for you, and you make them feel really good about themselves, and you make them feel very content and, and all of that, there's also something very different about this connection than what they're used to. I get that with the paranormal card here. I, I mentioned a sense of like otherness. Um, so I kind of feel like this connection may be sort of unconventional or unusual for them. Um, for example, maybe you're not the type of person that they usually get involved with. Maybe the circumstances of your relationship were kind of weird somehow. You know, I just feel like there's something or there was something about your connection that was n sort of non-traditional for them. Okay. I don't really get the sense that there's been a lot of like outright conflict between the two of you. I mean, it's of, of course it's possible that there has been, but I don't really feel that... <sighs> any kind of conflict is like the main reason that you're not in contact right now. Does that make sense? Um, I feel like for a lot of you, this separation was, it just happened kind of naturally. Like you just sort of went your separate ways or, you know, somebody just kind of pulled back. Maybe you got ghosted, you know, it's, it just seems like something that just happened. And I don't really feel like there is or was a ton of hard feelings. Now, this isn't going to be applicable for all of you who chose this group, but this is, I feel, the case for the majority. Um, but <sighs> your person has been thinking about you a lot since you went your separate ways. Um, even now, you know, for some of you, it's, I feel like it's been some time since you really had contact with them, but still, even now, um, you know, they're, they're still thinking about this. This is still something that they reflect on from time to time, and it's still something that is affecting them because I feel like with you being gone, they're saying, there's like an empty spot in my life, an, an empty place in my heart that I never even knew existed before I met you. But now that we no longer are part of each other's lives, that that empty space, it just feels so huge. It feels like it's been magnified. And I didn't even know that it was there initially. And, and now it just feels like it's taking up so much of me. Um. This person is also saying that you kind of opened their eyes to a lot of new possibilities for them. I get the sense that whoever it is you're thinking of, whoever it is that's coming through here, um, I feel like they had kind of a, like a plan for their life. Like they had a plan for their life or they had, you know, expectations that they were intending to follow. Um, but your connection, like meeting you, being involved with you, it kind of required for them to step off the path that they had planned for themselves or, you know, step off the path that they were going down. Um, and that in itself was a little bit scary to them because meeting you kind of required for them to reevaluate 
um, some of their goals, some of their priorities, and also to reevaluate like how they thought about themselves. Um, and, and like I said, it kind of opened their eyes to other possibilities. The fact that, you know, potentially they could go down other paths. They could do something different from what they envisioned, from what they had always envisioned for themselves. And I get that with the Magician card being right in the middle of this spread here. And I feel like your connection was very exciting to them. I'm getting, you know, this was something new. This was something kind of thrilling. But at the same time, because of that, going along with that, it was also kind of terrifying. Um, this, like I said, this is the devil card. This is... This is like restriction. This is codependency. This is obsession, possessiveness. This card can represent anything that, that holds a person back or holds you down or prevents you from, you know, reaching your full potential. And I feel like this person has a lot of those things that they struggle with. A lot of, I want to say hang-ups. A lot of hang-ups, like personal hang-ups that could stem from like the way they were raised, their childhood, could stem from just past relationship experiences. Just, and, and, and I feel like a lot of these hangups just involve like how they think of themselves and how they see themselves. And something about you, something about your connection and made them see themselves differently, made them see themselves in a new light. And I think that kind of shook them up because it, it was, it's like it, it, it's like it caused them to question their identity as a person, which is interesting. So like I mentioned that for many of you, I feel like this connection was kind of unconventional for them or unusual for them in some way. Um... I just, I, I'm just getting like, you made me see myself in a new light, in, in a way that I never thought about myself before, and it was incredible and enlightening, but it was also very scary because it was like, I, I felt like, who am I? I felt like, who am I? What am I doing? Where am I going? There's kind of a feeling of like, existential dread, almost which <laughs> might sound kind of dramatic, but um, honestly, that's kind of how this person feels or felt in regard to your connection. And it's like you made them, you know, see themselves in a new light and, and you brought to light some things about themselves that they now see are maybe not the best. Um, you, you brought to light for them maybe some, you know, toxic tendencies that they have or, um, just negative traits, self-limiting thoughts, beliefs, etc. um, that they, you know, now that they've seen those things, they can't unsee them. So now it's, it's like they've been, because of your connection, they've been made super aware of all their shortcomings <laughs> and all of the problems that they have, that they've, you know, all the unresolved issues, core wounds, etc. that they, that they're holding on to. And this Seven of Wands is kind of talking to me about like, you know, you made me see those things and you've kind of set me on to the path of overcoming them becoming more than them. Um, the Seven of Wands really is about like fighting to overcome adversity, fighting to work past a setback. Temperance relates to healing and, and you know, creating a balance. So um, this person is basically saying like, you set me on the path to becoming a better version of myself, to, to growth. And they're, they're recognizing this, okay? 
Um, I'm going to pull a few of these Oracle cards and see if there's anything that they would like to add. Okay, we have reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Like I mentioned already, I get the impression that a lot of you probably are in, have, have little to no contact with this person. So this card is kind of implying that, um, okay, this is the card that kind of flipped itself over when I first started shuffling, but I put it back in. Um, we have reconciliation and we have give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership. This person, I think, really would like to reconnect with you in the future. Honeymoon, enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. I relate this card a lot to the Six of Swords, which is about conflict resolution, and it also has an association with reconciliation. Um, it's like people coming together, working through problems, moving forward together. And let me get one more of these. This is like what they want, okay? We have the children card. Your love life is being affected by children. So this doesn't necessarily mean that this person wants to have children with you or in general. Um, although it can mean that, and it does mean that for some of you. Uh, this card also relates to like innocence, new beginnings, new fresh energy coming into a situation, okay? I really feel that this person wants to reconnect with you eventually. They would like to have a reconciliation. They would like to give this relationship a chance, an opportunity to grow, to become something beautiful because they feel it's, it's like they know your connection has the potential to be something really beautiful because this connection is so unique and so special. But when you were together or, you know, when you were a part of each other's lives, it's like they were just not in the right place to embrace it. And they're saying, you know, in the future, eventually I will be ready to embrace it. And I just hope that things maybe will work out when that time comes. This doesn't mean you need to wait for me because that would be unfair to you. But, you know, maybe the universe, maybe our stars will align. Maybe the universe will bring us back together in perfect timing and everything will work out. Okay. And I am going to grab a couple of these, lastly. Hmm. Okay. So this card, a message for you. I am thinking of you this very moment. Your love fills me with light. Kind of self-explanatory. And this card says, when you pass from this world, you take nothing with you, but the memories you have shared with those you love. This person wants you to know that they carry your memory with them. They carry, they carry their feelings for you with them every day, all day, all the time. They know that you deserve better than who they are, what they are now. And I think that's why... I think that's why things just didn't work out. I think that's why you just kind of drifted away from each other or, or, or why this person pulled away from you. Because they knew that this, it, it, it just wasn't the time. That's what they're saying. It just wasn't the time. I wasn't in the right place. And I'm still not in the right place yet, but it's eventually I will be. And they're really emphasizing, you know, don't wait up for me. 
you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be with someone who will make you happy. And there is someone who will make you happy besides me. You know, there's no such thing as the one. There are several. So don't wait up for me. I'm trusting that when the time is right, things will work out the way that they're supposed to. Hmm. Okay. Group three, I think I'm going to leave it at that. That's what your person wants you to know. So I hope that this resonated with you. I hope that this was interesting. Um, you know, this is just general, so take what applies to you, leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. If you would like a personal reading, you can go to the links in the description box, my Etsy store, or my website. All the information about how to order will be in those links. And, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today, you guys. Um, I, I really appreciate you joining me, and I hope I see you all next time. Bye!